All right, YouTube, back for review number three. Number three today. This is gonna be the last one, um, I think. We'll see. We'll see about that. But I've always wanted to do these car reviews. I used to have um, a bunch of other cars. I always wanted to do reviews on them. Just never got around to it. Never took the time to it. Today's a perfect day because it is rainy and gross outside. It's a nice fall day and. Uh, yeah, I figured what better to do than do some car reviews because, um, yeah, got nothing better to do and I don't feel the best, so why not? <laughs> so, this is going to be the last review. This is my brand new 2023 Subaru WRX. And uh, let's just go ahead and start off with another Bible verse and then I'll give you a backstory in this car here. So, the verse is going to be Matthew 7, 7 through 11. And that goes, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then who are evil, it's us, I'm evil. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? We've all heard that saying that goes, if you don't ask, you don't get. This is true. Let me tell you a bit about the backstory of this car, how I acquired this 23 WRX, and how it was God that made it all possible. So, my old winter beater that I had before this, it was a 99 Subaru Legacy SUS, the sport utility sedan. It's a pretty cool car. It was a good car. I owned it for about five years. I bought it in... I think it was September of 2018. And yeah, I drove that for like five years. It had, I bought it cheap. I did some repairs on it, but honestly I got away with doing like very little on that car. And it was very good to me the entire time I owned it. Um, but it did leak a lot of oil. That's one thing it did do consistently. It leaked oil and it leaked coolant when it got cold out. Um, but the thing is, is um, I learned a lot through that car. I really did. Um, this past summer, I borrowed it out to two friends, and I learned because um, historically, I've never, I've never let anyone drive my cars. I've never let anyone uh, use my cars really before. Um, but yeah, I let I let people borrow it because they needed it, you know. And that's the thing. I had it sitting around all summer. I wasn't using it. I have two other cars I could drive, and I just learned to let go of things, you know. I learned that God's in perfect sovereign control over all things. Um, including the things that he's given me and uh, some of those things are cars you know like um, I mean sure I bought them but you know God watches over me with them and he watches over others with them too and if it's his car to use then it's his car to use you know and I had friends that needed needed a car their cars were in the shop so I let one borrow it and then when it came back the same night brought it over to another friend and uh, they ended up using it for uh, I think it was the first one was like five weeks and the second one used it for uh, I think it was like three or four weeks something like that but basically I didn't drive the car all summer and it was really cool I learned to just let go you know and trust that God was in control um, yes it was a winter beater but still like it was a it's a pretty big risk you know letting somebody borrow a car like that especially when you know you're not seeing it every day and especially one that leaks oil and you know has a little bit of issues here and there that car definitely wasn't perfect <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was really cool. And the thing is, like like I said, that car leaked oil. And I mean, it did. It left spots, like, just, I mean, just massive on the ground. It was bad. It was really bad. But the entire time that car was being borrowed out, it didn't leak a drop of oil. Like, it was insane. I checked the oil on it, like, a couple times. And it was always just right up there. Never had any issues at all. It was crazy, you know. It was God watching over uh, the people that were borrowing it and just taking care of them. And... When I got the car back, um, my dad ended up using it. So then it was a, a third person borrowing it. So then I didn't didn't use it even more. I think I drove it like one time that whole summer or something like that, or one, one or two times or something like that. But yeah, it was just really cool seeing seeing God use my car like that, and uh, you know use it because uh, really it's his car. You know it's his car. I was just uh, I was just the owner of it, I guess, right, or uh, the caretaker, I guess we'll put it that way. God owned it. I was the caretaker. So. It was pretty cool. But after I got it back, you know, it just kind of felt like it was time to part ways with the car. It, um, the registration was due in September, and I just didn't really, um, didn't feel called to renew that registration because I just felt like I wasn't going to be around much longer. 
I didn't know how God would provide, but I knew that he would. I just trusted that he would. And I always wanted to get a new WRX. I've been looking at them since like last year when this model came out. And I was just like, you know, I really want one. I wanted the generation prior, but never made a decision on it. And of course I got my other one here, the 2010. But I really like these new ones and uh, it just never felt like the right time. I was always intimidated by going to the dealer, talking to people, you know, and talking to a uh, sales representative and stuff like that. Well, finally, I got over that fear. I went over to the local Subaru dealer, um, took a 22 for a test drive. It was a used one. Um, it was Sapphire Blue, I think they call it. And it was a good car. They didn't want to work with me on a deal. So I just said, you know what? I'll sleep on it, pray about it, and I'll, I'll think about it. You know what I mean? So about a month goes by almost, and uh, we had talked about ordering a white premium while I was there because I really wanted one in white. They had a white base model, but I didn't want a base model. I'd rather have a premium because of a few different features on it. And we didn't end up ordering the car, but they had one on order, I guess, that was basically the car I would have ordered. So one night after the gym, hop online, look online there, and uh, they had a white premium on the lot. So I go over there, check it out, and it's a gorgeous car. You know, I look at it, and it's, it's this one here. And uh, it was awesome. We'll put it that way. It was awesome. So the next day, the salesman calls me up. He goes, hey, we got a white premium. And I was like, I know. I looked at it the last night. And uh, and he's like, you want it? I was like, of course I want it. We got to cut a deal on it. We got to make a deal on it. So I go back in, and I'm praying about it. I prayed about it that night before. And, you know, it just felt like it was the right thing to do to try to make a deal on this car. And um, I'll get a little bit more into that, you know, why I can use the new car anyways. But um but yeah so anyways we go back in we make a deal on it i tell them what i want to be at for a monthly payment and i ended up using that subaru financing calculator to my own advantage to get myself a lower interest rate um yeah it was uh it was an intimidating process but i'm glad that god was with me through it all and uh then they wanted to sell me all the packages i didn't want any of that stuff because i end up modifying things work on things myself anyways but it was pretty cool because I ended up going with a warranty. I told them, hey, if you can get that warranty within the budget that I wanted, you know, they were already within like, I think $12 of my, uh, my goal where I wanted to be at. And I'm like, you know, if I would have taken the warranties and stuff, they would have put me way over that. And I'm like, hey, if you guys can get those warranties down um, in there and get the payment down to exactly where I wanted it, then I'll take it. And they come back and we go, hey, they go, they go, hey, we got your uh, interest rate down another 0.2%, and uh, we discounted the rates of the um, the warranties, and they got it within $4 of my, my goal for my monthly payment. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's go for it. So it's cool how God provided that way. Got me this car at a good deal. And, uh, yeah, now the thing is, like, my old car, my old Legacy, that thing, like I said, it had some issues. In winter, it liked to leak coolant a lot. It leaked fuel too, um, and I mean, I honestly, I just kept tightening the clamps on it because the coolant. I'm pretty sure, like, there was exhaust getting in, into the into the cooling system, and it was just pushing out in random places when it got really cold out. But then once it warmed up, it was fine, you know. But I drove it for five years like that. But I used it as a crutch, so I didn't have to go places. I didn't have to give people rides. Um, and the thing is, I've been volunteering with my church now in the youth group, and I've been uh, going to Bible studies and stuff like that. And I don't want to ever use that car as a crutch that, you know, I can't, I can't get somewhere, I can't do something because my car isn't going to get me there, if that makes sense. So I was like, you know what, if I have a new car, um, obviously it is partly a want to, but if I have a new car, then I don't have that excuse anymore. I can't use that excuse. And uh, yeah, so here we are. Here's the new car. And yeah, it's an awesome car. I already changed out a few things on it. Um, if you guys know Subarus, they they come with um, the WRXs come with summer tires now. So I don't know if they always have, but here's the original wheels. It's just uh, charcoal gray. I don't know premium wheels, 18 inch. They got Dunlop summer tires. They're nice. They look okay, I guess. Um, I might get new summer wheels too, but. Yeah, um, I got it all set up for winter mode already, so we'll just kind of do a quick walk around on the outside, and then we'll do a cold start. It's like all stock performance-wise. I don't think I'm ever going to change anything performance on it. We'll see. But, yeah, I'll show you guys just a overview of 
um, the outside of the car. So I put some stickers on it. I got LSPR, Lake Superior Performance Rally stickers from 2019 and also 2022. I haven't been to this rally in quite some time, but um, luckily I keep getting stickers so I can put them on my cars. I'm a huge rally fan, as you can probably tell by the look of this car, but yeah, otherwise it's just, you know, stock quad tip exhaust. Um, I got a Road America license plate coming in that's going to say Kaido, which is Japanese for road. And I also kind of thought of um, Hokkaido, Japan, which is a popular place in Japan for rally racing. So, so I thought that was kind of cool too. So we'll see how that looks when I, when I get that. Um, yeah, for the wheels, I went with OZ Rally 18 by 8. Stock tire size 245, 40 R18. I went with the Vredstein Windtrack Pros. They're a very high performance winter tire. Um, I've already put like 400 miles on this fall with these tires. I know it's kind of warm for winter tires yet, but I don't really care. Um, they'll be fine. And then I got red rally armor mud flaps, red with the white logo. I think that looks fantastic. Um, what else did I do here? Oh, you know what? I do have, I don't know if you can see it, but I got the Rays black lug nuts, the same ones that I got on my blue car. I really, really like these lug nuts. They look awesome. And, um, yeah, they're just good quality. These wheels came with some like chrome lug nuts from Tire Rack and they were just gross looking so I did not want to use those. Um, and stock Subaru lug nuts are junk. Just throw them away, get something different. But anyways, I also did the reflector delete right here. This used to be just like a red reflector. Now it's like kind of like a fake vent, kind of like the front fender. Um, just looks cool. I don't know, I think it looks awesome. So that's what the OEM cars in Japan had. See, it kind of matches the the front then. It's kind of hard to see that. I'll have to pull it outside so we can get a better look at it. I'll probably just do that. And then, um, yeah, we'll do the rest of the review. does have the keyless entry so you just like put your hand in there and you, know, you can open it up and then you can also lock it there they won't let me lock it because the key's not in it but um it has the auto dimming mirrors with the approach lighting too so you walk up and put your hand in the door and then that approach light comes on um and then i did i did just put the floor lighting in as well i got this kit from walmart that worked pretty good oh no the led strips falling off Maybe I lied, it doesn't work that good. Dang Walmart. <laughs> but anyways, that one's holding up. Hmm, weird. 
But anyways, I guess it was just this one that fell off. <laughs> but yeah, it looks pretty good otherwise. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is the inside. This is a premium without the sunroof. Um, I don't really know what trim that is exactly, but it doesn't have the Harman Kardon system, but it does have the big touchscreen radio, which I like. And it does have, um, it has auto up down on all four, even on the other switches too, which is cool. I'm trying to think what else the premium has. Oh, the premium has the, the pedals, that's right. It has the pedals just like my 2010. And then it comes with fog lights too, whereas the base model does not come with fog lights. Um, trying to think what else. Oh, that's right. It does have the the heaters, so it has heated side view mirrors, heated windshield, and the rear window. That does all three at the same time, and then it turns off after like 15 minutes. That's pretty cool. I like how it has this um, front defrost. It just makes it nice and convenient. Just click it and it goes on right away. And then it has individual climate control for left and right, and then you can sync it up if, if you want. Sync it up. Um, so that works out pretty nice. It does have heated seats as well, whereas the base model does not have heated seats, so that's cool. Um, trying to think what else I did in here. Oh, I remember. So a couple other things. So I did do a couple mods. I did do the short shifter, um, or no, it came with the STI short throw shifter as like a factory accessory option. Um, that's also what those, um, those mirrors were. Those were accessory option as well. And it came with the home link mirror, which I programmed to my garage door opener at home. But as far as mods, I did put the, um, Cobb shifter stop on. So it makes it a lot tighter on the left side. So there's like no wiggle at all. And then I tightened up the five, six gate just a smidge too. So there's like no wiggle at all there anymore either. Oh, come on now. So yeah, it feels nice and tight. Of course, three and four are tight, but yeah, so that was cool. And then I did put that Cobb Delrin shift knob on. That's the tall white weighted shift knob. Um, and then it does have a push button start, which is different for the premium. The premium has a push button, whereas the base model has a key start. You can still see where the, the key would normally go, kind of sort of, it goes right there normally. But, um, Yes, yeah, so that push button start is pretty cool. And I changed out the button. I put that one on. It says STI and has engine start stop there. It's red and still lights up like it would normally. But the normal button's just black plastic. Looks boring. Um, if you do put one of those in, I would recommend taking the whole switch out. That's what I did. I just popped, popped all the panels and stuff like that. And then um, you can pull the switch out from the back. And then I use my fingernail to get the chrome ring off because if you try to get it without the chrome ring being off, you're pretty likely to damage your, <laughs> your chrome ring. So yeah, I just use my fingernail to pry it up because it pries up pretty easily. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I did put a, another rally sticker on the dash just because I'm a goofy goober like that. And then I got the cob sticker on the dash as well because I got the cob shift knob. I don't think I'll ever do any tune on this car or anything like that like I did on the blue WRX but um yeah oh one other thing I did change out the steering wheel trim too I put that one on that's an OEM STI S4 bit from Japan the normal one is just fake carbon fiber right here and then it says WRX it's just kind of ugly so I wanted to get this one this one's piano black and it's got the gray trim on it just wanted to get another quick view of the interior stuff here. So there's that steering wheel trim. It looks so sharp with that black piano black and then the STI logo. And of course it matches the STI push button start. That's the noble push button, by the way. I should I should mention that. And then of course the short throw shifter. And I just went with the white knob because it's like uh very rally oriented, you know what I mean? <laughs> So let's just go around the outside real quick again, then we'll do a little driving video. I figure there's no point in really doing an exhaust video on this car just because it's so quiet and it has no performance mods anyways. This thing is also filthy as you can see. I just drove it to uh, 
Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, I have not washed it yet, so <laughs> I should probably do that. It's got bugs all over the front end. But yeah, I just, I love the rally look with these OZ rally wheels. Oh, there's water on the screen. Sorry, it's raining now. But uh, yeah, I just, I dig the rally look so much. It's just, it's exactly what I wanted. So of course with the mud flaps too, it's just, just wonderful. I just love it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty quiet if I'm being honest, but I don't mind it. My other cars are allowed the srt and the the blue wrx they're they're both insanely loud now so <laughs> i can have one quiet car it's it's fine by me so oh yeah also the premium has a different thing too where like um the seats are different they're just like black cloth instead of um there's like some some like red mixed in here so it looks a little bit different than like the center but um yeah the base model is like kind of like gray right here or something like that I didn't really like the base model seats, so I wanted to get the premium. But yeah, like I said, the the premium has those um, those metal pedals that are just I don't know. It's iconic to the WRX in my opinion because they've like all had that for years. So even my old four had those same pedals. Um, I wish the door panels were a little nicer. The Limited has like it's like leather or something or like ultra suede. I think it looks cooler. It just looks a little bit more upscale, but it works fine, so I can't complain. Maybe I'll change it out in the future at some point, but yeah. Otherwise, it's a very nice car. I really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it'll be a good daily driver for sure. And I'm all set for winter with my new rally skins. <laughs> so let's get the GoPro set up for uh, some driving, and then uh, I guess that'll be it. All right. So... Uh oh, lost my box. Where'd it go? Oh no, it's gone forever. Oh boy, that's like really under there. There we go. We'll go for a little drive in the new WRX here, and uh, gotta put all my GoPro stuff away. Had to swap out batteries. These batteries sure don't last very long on GoPros. I wish I would have found that out before I bought one, but I don't know what else I'd use instead of a GoPro anyways. So. It only lasts like, I swear, like 40 minutes or something. It's pretty bad. But yeah, we'll go for a little drive in the new Subie. And uh, I was driving flip-flops, and I kicked my right flip-flop off to use the gas pedal. But I, I use my left one yet to, use, to operate the clutch because it makes it a little bit easier on my foot, I think. But I, I just prefer barefoot gas pedal and brake pedal. <laughs> um, also, one thing to note, too, about this new Subaru, I think I mentioned it in my... 2010 review that I did just a little bit ago but um the clutch pedal is insanely light like I mean it's still like heavier than like some cars I think but like compared to the 2010 and the neon like holy smokes this pedal is like stepping on nothing it's crazy I don't know I just wanted to note that it's kind of cool also I just realized too this is just like mist or whatever and then this is wiper on it's really strange because the neon is opposite i just drove the neon and uh the neon you go up with the wipers which always trips me out and then subarus you go down <laughs> so yeah let's just go for a little spin here and uh we'll see how the car drives only got 750 miles on it bought it um like three weeks ago now or something so not too bad took it on one longer trip sort of kind of it's like one and a half hours each way or so actually almost two hours each way yeah, i got to drive it around downtown madison by the state capitol that was a lot of fun and uh drive it around by the university another thing to note is just how touchy the brakes are in new cars you like touch them and they feel like you're gonna stop immediately old cars you like really gotta Put your foot hard down on the brake to get it to stop. <laughs> Flip flops like to squeak on the pedals. That's right though. 
as you can tell, this thing's very, very quiet. It's not very loud at all, but I like that. It's good, you know? It's like, it's just uh, normal, you know what I mean? But it's still fast. It's still got some, some punch to it, you know? I think these are technically faster than a last generation STI, although the STI sounds insanely better. We all know that. It's the unequal boxer rumbles what everybody wants. That's what I want too, but it's okay. I already have a, an older WRX, so that's where I get that from. <laughs> but yeah, this is just a, an all-around good car. I really enjoy it. I know a lot of people have asked me, they're like, oh, do you like the, ba the black plastic flares? And I'm like, you know, I don't hate them. I don't, I don't mind them. It's like, yeah, it's kind of a cross truck sedan sort of look or whatever you want to call it, but um, it's not that bad, really. It's not, um, especially with the OZ rally wheels. I think it just fits really well, um, and yeah, it's like it's just an all around good look. I think I have a different look in mind for summer. We'll see how how that goes. Maybe I'll do the painted flares. There's a couple cars in town here already that have the painted flares, and I must say they do look very, very good. One's red, one is silver. The silver one doesn't look quite as cool. The red one looks really good though, but that one's also got like lip kits and stuff like that too. So that one's very modified. also say this car for being a brand new car it just it feels pretty analog yet which is good you know I mean it helps that it's got a manual transmission but it like it just feels like a driver's car you know I don't know how to describe it it's a it's just a really good all-around driver's car you know it's just tactile feeling um, good shifter good clutch just easy easy to drive and makes just about just the right amount of noise that it's like not too boring you know what I mean that's why I don't want to change out the exhaust because from inside it sounds nice from outside it doesn't really sound like anything but that's okay but yeah compared to my other cars like the 2010 that car just feels a little bit more raw with like the sounds that it makes you know the, the other aftermarket modifications I've made to it and then the neon that thing just feels like positively archaic compared to this but that one like this the steering on both those cars is a lot heavier than than the steering on this car and um yeah just kind of stuff like that you know steering's heavier um clutches are a lot heavier the wrx the other wrx the 2010 i got i don't think that one's got an aftermarket clutch but i could be wrong because it is a very heavy pedal the neon does have an aftermarket clutch but for an aftermarket clutch i feel like it's got a pretty light pedal but it's still a lot heavier than this one um but yeah those cars just they feel a lot older than this one even though this one does drive like a nice manual car should all right well there we have it heading back to my storage unit now so i want to drive the 2010 wrx some more that i got since I just put a Catless downpipe on, it's a lot of fun. And I've uh, just been enjoying driving it around here the past day or so since I got it put on. So, yeah, I'll head back and swap out cars. But uh, I know this review wasn't the most exciting, but it's just a stock WRX with winter wheels, you know, nothing too exciting. It's not like it's crazy fast, doesn't sound that cool, you know. So, at least it's something. Um, yeah, if I ever put like a muffler on it or something, I'll definitely do some more videos. There's a good chance I might get an exhaust. I know I, did, I know I said before I don't want to do any power mods, but I mean an exhaust and intake, come on, it's a turbo car. You got to do that stuff, right? So yeah, I might do that. We'll see. So if I do that, I'll do some more videos. I was thinking about doing a pair and intake, and then I was also thinking about a uh, NVIDIA Q300 exhaust. I feel like that'd sound pretty good, because I don't want to make it crazy loud. If I do make it a little bit louder, like I think the Q300 would be a good way to go, because 
it would be like a good mix of quiet and loud if that makes sense so plus i just think the mufflers look cool they're those big chrome canister mufflers you know with the quad tips that look pretty nice so yeah um let me know what you guys think of my reviews and um maybe i'll try to get some more out of other people's cars if i if i can do that so <laughs> yep enjoy see you guys